everyone, so this is another video about the Nest IO, but this one this is uh, a small twist I've made uh, on the Barty original PCB. Uh, the original PCB looks like that. This is already a, this is already a small change, but I will explain that later. And one of the major complaints I have about this is if you want to install it on a front loader, you have to cut on the back. And there are people which I could agree at some degree doesn't like to cut a 20 plus uh, year old console because they want to preserve as mint as possible or to revert um, the, the, the mod uh, if possible. So um, the thing is uh, one of the cool features of this is uh, if you modify your uh, NES RGB you can plug um, a, a HD retrovision cable so you can have components um, without uh, getting like RGB and converting everything. And this is pretty cool, but uh, I tried to uh, think about if we could make a no-cut version. So this is my tech on it. As you can see, uh, rather than have a full uh, SNES connector, I have a uh, 9 pin uh, connection. Uh, so I I will explain why I, I choose the 9 pin and not the 8 pin. And on the side, you have the uh, S video connector. So the connection to the NERS RGB uh, won't change, but the only difference is you should be able to plug an HD Retrovision or um, Sega Genesis 2 uh, SCART cable. Uh, you may have to change either the RGB those one so those are 75 ohm resistor if I uh, not mistaken and uh, you don't need them because on the SCAR cable you will have those resistance so the goal is uh, rather than, than use an 8 pin and it doesn't uh, touch the RGB I choose to uh, rather have a 9 pin so you can like use like the Basilian uh, Genesis uh, SCAR Genesis 2 SCAR cable and uh, again, HD Retrovision uh, um, uh, component cable. Of course, you don't you don't you don't have to cut anything, and it's lying pretty well. I asked, had to make some modification on the S video because the S video will be uh, too short. So you, there's a um, small spacer here but it doesn't change the rigidity or, the, or anything for that. The other point is, as you can see, is this. So this is something you won't find on the original uh, body design. And it is there on what was... Uh... So the thing is, there are actually no really good solution for the audio uh, on the NES. Everybody is doing its own solution. You got a mixing here on your NES RGB. But you still have to uh, solder here uh, the um, expansion audio. And then you have to uh, add some resistor on uh, one of the pin of the, of the card slot. And Honestly, I don't know how to handle that because uh, everybody has his own taste. Uh, some people uh, prefer to take directly from the from the CPU and add some potentiometer. But uh, the thing is, I, I don't think right now we have a good solution to compare those audio solutions. So this is what I uh, what I meant. So if you take a closer look, this is designed to uh, work first with. Um, uh, Tim Worthington and uh, S, uh, NES RGB, you get like the audio coming in, the mi uh, mixed audio from here. So I think it's uh, O for output, if I remember correctly. The A and the B are from the CPU, and the O is to uh, the output. You get the output. You get a plus 5 volt, you get ground, and on the 
This is the input and on the output you have the, uh, the mono for uh, the, um, the mono output here and you get stereo. So basically what this is doing is just making taking the input from the NAS RGB and output on the stereo and the mono. But if you think you have a good solution uh, for the audio, you can design your own uh, expansion board and just ignore uh, the NAS RGB one and you will have like the stereo or the mono. The goal is to provide to everybody the same uh, base uh, for uh, doing the audio, an audio mod and to compare them uh, at some point. So I'm going to mod this um, front loader. Um, I think I'm going to at least film uh, to remove uh, this one because on the previous one it was really messy uh, and um, I didn't film it. So this time I'm going to, to show at least that. The rest is exactly the same. You remove the PPU, you put the socket, everything provided in a Team Worthington uh, kit. And then you get like your board like that. I'm going to put my small bridge, um, which is provided in my kit, uh, the front, the, Nessar, the Nessayo kit. And all the wires are not supposed to change. This is exactly the same. This is only the output and the audio module, which is uh, slightly different. The rest is exactly the same. That's why that's not really a revision two. This is like a revision 1.5 because this is something like people uh, who don't want to cut their console. And uh, yes, I'm going to do that.
So uh, I won't continue to show the installation of the NES RGB. I've already done the video about that. What I'm going to do is just uh, jump uh, after the installation of the new revision, the no cut, um, because it's installing the same way, the same wire, exactly the same. You just put it like that with the headers, pre-solder of course. Then you put your except from that it's like you just install it. you have a slight adjustment you know to be sure it's uh, really centered but uh, uh, far from that as I told you pretty sure you have to remove those one I will confirm that after my testing a revision from last year I think it's a uh, rave uh, 1.3 something or 1.4 I don't remember but it's pretty recent one the one from my previous video was pretty old so you don't have the caps to remove only but since we are doing on the no cut you will have to remove the um, resistor if you're doing the old classic with the uh, SNES multi-out you don't touch anything you left those uh, resistor so yeah jump cut and let's see you after the installation so I've just tested it and uh, it's working fine no problem whatsoever uh, small uh, notice here I've just said it oops I've just tested it with uh, a SCART uh, LGB card for um, Genesis 2 so it has inside uh, the capacitor and the resistor you need to make it work so it's working as I expected you need to remove so on the NES RGB you need to remove the 4 uh, 75 uh, ohm resistor because they are inside the SCART you will still have some modification to do to your SCART cable because if you try to plug it you will see that the thickness of the uh, plastic uh, will pre prevent to push the uh, cable to the uh, full uh, length so you will have to cut a bit your barrel and it, should, it will work fine right now it is working fine it's just like not really secured so it may unplug like nothing same thing for the uh, s video uh, you will have the same issue this is because the plastic is too, thi too thick so here it is this is the uh, no cut version uh, it should be uh, on stock when the video is coming up on my store i will put everything uh, on github um, all the uh, pcb and um, everything you need. This is uh, the first part of this mod uh, because I'm working, still need to be tested, but I'm working for the same thing for the Famicom IO, for the original Famicom. So if you have a Famicom, it should replace the power module here and uh, same thing it should give you either uh, the 9 pin uh, mini DIN uh, for uh, Genesis 2 style uh, cable or uh, the uh, multi out and here it should give you the composite and stereo output the thing is I need to uh, work on the audio module right now I have an issue so it will work uh, like that uh, I would say with the, the blank uh, audio module but you will lose uh, the um, mixing from uh, the um, expansion which is supposed to be uh, on this one um, by default so this will be on the part two I'm still waiting for a new revision for the audio module and when I get everything and sure this is safe this is my main concern I don't want to publish something uh, dangerous for your for your uh, console I will publish again everything and put everything 
uh, on stock uh, on the store. So I hope you like it. Uh, thanks for watching and see you very soon for the part 2 of the Nokia version for the NES and the Famicom IO.